So in this last video on partial fractions, we're going to look at the case where we've got an irreducible quadratic in the denominator. So let me show you what I mean. If we look at this integral that's given here, firstly, it's proper. If I multiply it out, my denominator is to the power 3. My numerator is to the power 2, so I do not need long division. But if you look at the denominator, there's an x squared plus 1, which I cannot factorize further, so we call it irreducible. So if I look at 5x squared minus 14x minus 3 over x minus 5, x squared plus 1, to write it as partial fractions, It'll be something over x minus 5. Now, x minus 5 is linear, so my numerator is 1 power less, so it's a constant, plus something over x squared plus 1. But this can be a linear function, bx plus c. So take note, the exponent is 1 less, so the degree is 1 less than my denominator. So if I've got an irreducible quadratic in the denominator, my numerator can take a form bx plus c. So we must anticipate for that. But other than that, we treat it exactly the same. So my numerator on my left-hand side is 5x squared minus 14x minus 3. My numerator on my right-hand side will be a times x squared plus 1 plus bx plus c times x minus 5. We treat it exactly the same way as we did the previous ones. The algebra just becomes a little bit more messy, but it really isn't much to worry about. So I'm going to look at when x is equal to 5. My left-hand side, you might need a calculator for that. That becomes a bit of work. 5 times 25 minus 14 times 5 minus 3. You should get 52. Just take a look. On the right-hand side, the second term becomes 0. My first term becomes 26a. So very nice. I can then find my value of a is then just 2. But now there's nothing else I can substitute in to make a term equal to zero. So I'm going to start looking at specific terms. I'm going to start with the x squared terms. So the x squared terms, if I look at them, on the left-hand side, I've got 5x squares. On my right-hand side, if I multiply out, there'll be ax squared plus bx squared. There won't be any cx squares. So I've got my value of a is 2, so b must be equal to 3. And then now I need to get to C. I see C has an X term, so I look at the X terms. On my left-hand side, I've got minus 14 X's. On my right-hand side, there's no X's in this one. My second one, I've got minus 5 B X's, if I multiply that out, plus C. So now I'm going to find the value of C. I know B is 3, so I've got plus 14, so C will be 1. So I've got A, B, and C, so now I can go on with the integration. So let's take a look. <clears throat> that means the integral of 5x squared minus 14x minus 3 divided by x minus 5 times x squared plus 1 dx. I can then write as the integral of a over x minus 5. My a value was 2. So that's 2 over x minus 5 plus bx plus c. 3x plus 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Now, we can't integrate yet because I do not necessarily have techniques to do the second term. But it's a very quick one step. We're going to rewrite this as 2 over x minus 5. And I'm going to break this up into two terms. 3x over x squared plus 1 plus 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. And hopefully you recognize the first one is just lin x minus 5. The second one is a u substitution. If I let u equal to x squared plus 1, the derivative is sitting there. So that one will be easy to do and you should get 3 over 2 lin of x squared plus 1. Yet again, if you're not comfortable with me just writing the answer, pause it, do the use substitution and see that you get to the same answer. But I'm assuming you've done enough of these to be able to get to this one quickly. And the third one is definitely not a lin one. It's not a use substitution. That's an example of an inverse streak function. So hopefully you can recognize that as arctan of x. So there's my integral. So it's a little bit more work if I've got an irreducible quadratic in the denominator, but it's important for you to recognize that the numerator will then take on the form bx plus c. So we're going to do one more. Yet again, we don't have to do long division. 
but in this case my quadratic irreducible in the denominator is repeated so it's even messier but we're going to treat it the same way we're going to look at 1 minus x plus 2x squared minus x cubed over x times x squared plus 1 squared and as partial fractions that'll be a over x plus now because this quadratic is repeated There'll be one option with x squared plus 1 squared and one option with just x squared plus 1. But because it's a quadratic, it'll have to be bx plus c plus dx plus e. So I've got lots of variables to find now. So it's going to be a bit more work, but the technique stays the same. But the important part with these is that you're able to write it out as partial fractions and you've got the right number of terms and you know what the numerator looks like. So let's see. 1 minus x plus 2x squared minus x cubed is then a times x squared plus 1 squared plus bx plus c times x that's it plus dx plus e i need to multiply with x and with x squared plus 1. okay so what we can substitute in is x equal to zero that'll help my left hand side is 1, my right hand side, both the second and the third term become 0, so I've got A. 1A. So I've got A. Okay, that's a good start. But now there's nothing else I can substitute in. So I'm just going to start looking at some of the terms. So I'm going to start with the x to the power of 4 terms. On the left hand side, I don't have any x to the power of 4s. But on the right hand side, you'll see if I multiply out this first term, I'll have A x to the power of 4. My second term won't have any x to the power of 4s, but my th third one will have a dx times x times x squared, so it'll be dx to the power of 4. So a plus d is 1, I've got a is 1, oh a plus d is 0, I've got a is 1, so d must be minus 1. Alright, so we're moving. If I look at the x cubed terms, on the left hand side I've got minus 1 x cubed. On the right hand side, the first term won't generate any x cubed. My second part, if I multiply it out, I won't get any x cubes. My third part, I'll get x cubes. I'll get an e x cubed. And will there be any d x cubes? I don't think so, because I'll have a d x squared, x, d x to the power of 4, plus d x squared. Okay, so x cubes, I've got only the e. That's the only x cube that comes out, so I've got the value of e. So let's keep counting down my x squared terms. On the left, I've got 2x squares. On the right, my middle term here will be 2x squared plus a. So there's 2ax squares. Here, x squares, I'll have a bx squared. And here, I'll have a no ex squared. But there'll be a d times dx times x times 1 will be a dx squared. And yet again, if you're not comfortable with just doing it by inspection, you can multiply out this whole line, write a second line to make sure you get them all right. So I've got the value of a, I've got the value of d, so I can get the value of b from here. So a is 1, so I've got 2, b is minus 1, so d is minus 1, so b has to be 1. So what do I still need? I've got a, b, d, and e, I still need c. Now, I see C is going to have an X there. So, let's look at our X terms. On the left-hand side, I've got minus 1 X's. On the right-hand side, my first term will not result in any X's. The second term, I'll have a CX. The third term, will there be any X's there? I'll have an E times X times 1, so I'll have an EX. So, C plus E must be given minus 1. I already know as E is minus 1, so that tells me C is 0. So we've got them all, now we're ready to integrate. So let's rewrite that integral. So the integral of 1 minus x plus 2x squared minus x cubed over x times x squared plus 1 squared dx is the same as the integral of a over x. Now a we got as 1. So I've got 1 over x, remember your brackets, plus bx plus c. b was 1, so it's 1x. c was 0, so it's just x over x squared plus 1 squared. 
dx plus e, they were both minus 1, so it's minus x minus 1 over x squared plus 1. dx. Now, the first two should be familiar. The third one, again, I've got two terms in the numerator, so I'm just going to break them up. That's 1 over x plus x over x squared plus 1. Everything squared plus I've got a minus x over x squared plus 1. And yet again, you can write the minus in the front. That doesn't matter. Minus 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Now they're all standard forms, and I get the lin of the absolute value of x. Yet again, here I've got a u substitution. So that'll give me minus a half lin of x squared plus 1. No, 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 no. I've got the square in the denominator, so I'll have a 1 over u, so it's minus a half times 1 over x squared plus 1. There we go. Then I've got a lin, if I do a u substitution, so it's minus a half lin of the absolute value of x squared plus 1. Yet again, if you're not happy with these, just pause, do it on this piece of paper, write it out, make the substitution, and make sure you're happy. And again, we've got a arctan of x. So yet again, for all of these, the hard work is not in the integration. If you're comfortable with the integration, the hard work is in the algebra of writing it as a partial fraction. So just to summarize a couple of things, how many terms did we have in our, in our partial fractions that we broke up? Notice that if you add the exponents together, that tells you how many terms you're going to have. So it works out nicely like that. If you add the exponents together, you see how many terms you should have. So that's a check you can run. And then just to summarize the type of things we get out. Now, partial fractions can get a lot messier, but these are a lot of the standard ones that you should get out. So I'm just showing you here, summarizing what the partial fraction breakup looks like, depending on what our denominator is.